Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in this particular video, we will be discussing the basic difference between normalization and standardization. Now guys, I hope you have heard of this particular topic. It is a very important topic in feature scaling, which is an integral part of feature engineering. So we should try to understand that why we should use feature scaling and what is the basic difference between normalization and standardization. I'll also say that when to use this particular thing and when you should prefer for which algorithm you should prefer using this normalization or standardization technique, you know, and for which algorithm feature scaling suits. You know, it is not uh, necessary that you need to apply the feature scaling for each and every algorithm. Okay, so we'll try to understand that. I'll also show you the coding pattern, coding, how we can basically code, how we can basically perform normalization and standardization with the help of a small data set that I have and I've downloaded from Kaggle, you know. So I'll show you that particular example. So make sure that you watch this particular video till the end. Now guys, suppose if you have a use case and the most important thing for a use case is data. So initially you will be collecting the data and once you collect the data, you will be having a lot of features. Okay. And those features will be including your independent features and a dependent feature, right? With the help of the independent feature, you will try to predict the dependent feature in supervised machine learning, right? So when you consider these features, these features has two important properties. One is unit. The other one is magnitude. I have collected some of the data with respect to a person and I've collected data like age, weight, height. So all this particular information is collected. Now, if I consider these two important properties, that is unit and magnitude. Now, if I consider the feature age, the unit that is basically used to calculate age is number of years, right? From his date of birth, like how many number of years has been happened, right? So apart from that, the magnitude thing, if I talk about magnitude, that is basically the value. Suppose if I say 25 years, the person age is 25 years. So 25 over here is the magnitude and years, right? Years is basically your unit. So this is the basic thing and for each and every feature, this will be there. It will be either calculated with the using units, it will be calculated with the help of units and magnitude. Now, the main thing to understand is that if you are having many features, it will definitely be get, getting computed by different different units and magnitudes, right? It, in, it need not be always same because if I take an example of height feature, so in height feature, it may be calculated using feet, it may be calculated using inches, right? So this unit and magnitude will always vary between all the features. So it is very, very necessary that for a machine learning algorithm, the data that we provide, right, you know, we should try to scale down that particular data into some scale. Now, what kind of scale? I'll just discuss about that in just a while. So the two scales, the two most common techniques that is basically used is normalization and standardization. Now, if I give you a simple definition of normalization, normalization helps you to scale down your feature between zero to one. This is what is the uh, definition. Yes, definitely I'll show you the formula when I'll be actually showing you a practical application. But just understand that in simple terms, normalization helps you to scale down your feature between zero to one. Now, what about standardization? Standardization will help you to scale down your feature based on standard normal distribution. Now, if I talk about standard normal distribution over there, the mean is usually zero and the standard deviation is usually one, right? So this is the basic difference between standardization and normalization, right? And which one to use when I'll just discuss once I show you the practical application and then you'll be able to understand more nicely. Now let us go ahead and try to see a practical application and also show you the formula of a normalization which is also called as min max scalar. I'll show you how we can use a scalar library in order to perform that with the help of Python code. And I'll also be discussing about standardization and the library name is basically called a standard scalar. So we'll discuss about this. So let us go ahead and try to see the practical application. Now let us go ahead and try to see a practical application and we'll try to see the basic difference between normalization and standardization and later on I'll discuss like when we should use normalization and when we should use standardization. Now guys, uh, if I just talk about normalization over here, you can see that the main definition is that we need to scale down the values of the feature between zero to one. And this is the formula that is basically mentioned. So this is basically like X minus X mean divided by X max minus X mean. Okay, so this is basically the formula of min max scalar, which will actually scale down your values between zero to one. Now over here, I'm taking an example where I have basically written that pd dot read underscore csv, which is a pandas function. And I'm reading this particular content. And now again, guys, all this particular code will be given in the GitHub link. So you can basically consider this uh, from the GitHub link I give in the description box. You can download it from there. Okay. 
So over here, what I'm doing is that I'm just considering the three columns initially from this particular CSV file, which is called as wine underscore data dot CSV. And then I'm renaming the column columns as class, alcohol, and malik. So these are the properties that are present inside that particular data set. Uh, so if you consider about wine, it is basically combined with various, various features, you know, various chemicals, it is a mixture of various chemicals, and it is basically prepared. So once I do df.head, over here you can see that my output looks something like this, right? The top five records. I have class, alcohol, and malik. Now, in order to show you how to perform min-max scalar, which is also called as normalization, and again, there are varieties of normalization, but many people prefer min-max scalar in some of the use cases. And again, I'll discuss about the use cases when you should use that. So over here, I've written from sklearn.preprocessing import min-max scalar. Then I am basically creating an object of min-max scalar, which is inside the scaling object. And then I'm just doing fit underscore transform. And I'm passing which on features I need to basically scale down. Now understand guys over here, this alcohol and malic will be basically calculated or noted down here based on various units and magnitudes, right? So there is a huge difference over here, right? There is a huge difference between this. But again, uh, still, I hope you're not got the idea when we should do it. Just wait for some time. I'll just explain you when you should basically perform this, okay? So over here, you can see that the values are completely different. This, this may be a bigger number than in some of the records, it may be a smaller number, right? So the magnitude is huge over here, so we should try to scale down between the same scale, and for that, I'm using min-max scalar. So as soon as I do this, and I pass the fit transform, and pass the attributes inside this, you can see all the values present inside this, and it is getting replaced between, I mean, it is getting scaled down between zero to one. So you can see that the maximum value present over here is one, and then the minimum value will be somewhere between zero and one. You can see all the values, right? So yes, this is what it is happening. And always remember this feature, the, 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 the formula that I have actually shown you will get applied to each and every feature, right? So in that particular way, it basically works. Now, similarly, if you want to perform standardization, which is also called as Z-score normalization, this is the basic formula that you get. That is x minus, x is basically my feature data, minus mu is mean divided by standard deviation. And you know that, why do we use standardization? Here, all the features will be transformed in such a way that it will have the properties of the, so, so here all the features will be transformed in such a way that it will have the properties of standard normal distribution with mean is equal to zero and standard deviation equal to one. So this is basically the formula that you can see over here, z is equal to x minus mu by standard deviation. Now, in order to perform this, and again, remember the main thing is that the mean will be zero and standard deviation will be one. Like for whichever feature it is, it will be getting transformed or scaled down in that particular values. So if I go ahead down and see over here, you can see that from sklearn.preprocessing, you have to import this particular library, which is called a standard scalar. Now standard scalar, again, I'm telling you, it actually scales down a value considering mean is equal to zero and standard deviation equal to one. So as soon as I create an object of standard scalar and I do fit underscore transform and I pass the attributes like alcohol and malic, you can see that all the values has got transformed considering mean is equal to zero and standard deviation equal to one in that particular way. And usually in this scenario, we'll be getting a, uh, like if it is getting converted into standard normal distribution, it will be get converted like this into a bell curve. But the mean will be over here as zero and each and every standard deviation to the right, if I go, the value will be one, you know, one, two, three, like that. Uh, if I talk about the standard deviation in this case. So uh, this was how it is basically done, very simple way. Uh, you just have to use standard scalar and min-max scalar. And trust me guys, this is the most popular used library, I mean, technique like min-max scalar and standard scalar for most of the problem statement. Now I'll go ahead and try to make you understand when you should use standard normalization and when you should use min-max scalar. So let us go ahead and try to understand that. Let us go and understand when we should use standardization and when you should use normalization. Now in most of the scenarios guys, whenever you're using some machine learning algorithm, which involves Euclidean distance, okay? And suppose some of the deep learning techniques where you, where gradient descent is basically involved, you know? Gradient descent basically means the parabola curve where you need to find the best minimal point or global minima point, right? So that particular point in order to retrieve that particular point, if you want to have, if you want to get that particular point merged quickly, we basically have to scale down that particular values. So some of the algorithms like KNN, 
came your neighbor came means clustering you know uh, all the deep learning and artificial neural network convolution neural network so in all these particular cases we have to basically perform scaling guys some of the algorithms where you don't have to perform scaling is some like somewhere like decision trees random forest xg boost all the boosting techniques when i consider the bagging technique and the boosting technique which involves decision tree you don't have to scale down your values because there is no use of scaling down because at the end of the day you are just creating a decision tree right now decision tree is basically divided based on the features if you keep the value high or if you keep the values small it won't affect that much because based on some conditions the branches will be created in the decision tree but definitely for some of the algorithms where you are discussing like knn k means clustering uh, linear regression logistic regression because in linear regression also we consider that gradient descent to risk, reach the global minima point right so there also you have to do the feature scaling guys now if i talk about normalization and standardization which techniques should be used and when it should be used now guys based on my experience so for some of the use cases or for many of the use cases where i have actually used standardization which basically means that the mean will be zero and standard deviation will be one it has basically performed better than the min max scalar okay which is basically a normalization technique now it is not like that min max scalar is bad and it is it, it should not be used for most of the deep learning techniques where you using convolution neural networks right and artificial neural network you basically perform min max scalar because you need to scale down your values between 0 to 1 now if i take the example of images your images are between 0 to 255 pixels so if you want to scale down that value you always have to do it between 0 to 1 okay and usually for the images it is done similarly for the artificial neural network the neural networks that you create by using any of the libraries like tensorflow and uh, keras definitely they would accept inputs between 0 to 1 which will help them to learn the weights quickly so this is the basic difference between normalization and standardization and i have also explained you how you should go ahead and when you should basically use it but for most of the scenario in machine learning algorithms if i talk about standardization it performs well and that is completely based on my experience you know so this was the basic difference between standardization and normalization and i hope you have understood it i have also explained you with the help of a code now guys uh, if you are looking for some career transition advice you know with respect to data science how you should basically move i have basically given a link in the description because i found that youtube channel very much good because most of the advice that was given by data scientists like how they work how did they make the transition will be available in that particular channel so i have given that particular link in the description you can go ahead and watch it definitely will give you a whole lot of idea right so this was all about this particular video i hope you like this particular video please do subscribe the channel if you have not already subscribed i'll see you all in the next video have a great day ahead thank you one and all